everyone, in this video we're going to talk about Geisha. Geisha coffee is the most expensive coffee available in market yet. We are not just talking about Geisha where found, but also see how this varietal emerged such unprecedented in stage of barista competition. Geishas are frequently connected with Panamian coffees. Actually, production of the Geisha variety began there only in the 1960s. Geisha was initially found in the 1930s in the mountains of Geisha, Ethiopia. Geisha trees are tall with lovely elongated leaves. Growing them at high altitudes can boost their quality. Geisha made its debut in the world in 2004 when it won the Best of Panama competition. The Best of Panama is a coffee cupping competition founded in 1997 by the Panama Specialty Coffee Association SCAP. The finest beans compete for a spot in a special internet auction that commands hefty prices. Since then, this variety has made waves in the coffee sector as well as in all coffee competitions throughout the world. It's becoming more frequent to see about baristas winning contests using famed Keisha coffees. As a result, many producers may see a surge in demand in their coffee the day after major contests. While seeing a geisha is surely a gorgeous experience, I feel it is somewhat of a safe bet geisha has a reputation which may divert judges' attention away from the purpose of these events. Sensory judges in these events are frequently spoiled, with some having the honor of drinking more geisha in a single competition day than they would ever find in a year of cafes. In today's context, the concern before a championship is primarily not who will use geisha, as who will not use it. I'd want to take a minute to acknowledge that, while geisha is overused in competitions, no World Barista Championship winner in the preceding five years has used geisha. They have all stayed committed to their appreciation for the beauty of a certain varietals that they and their team hand selected for the competition. That is not to imply that some of these coffees are not even uncommon or exceptional in their own rights. Sasa Sestik, the 2015 World Barista Championship champion from Australia, grabbed the stage with a coffee that may be described as legendary, the Sudan Room variety. As a result, I contend that knowledge and dedication to coffee discovery should be appreciated above all else. Despite its popularity among professionals, the famed geisha has yet to strike a chord with cafe patrons. We may blame it on the fact that these coffees taste best as filter brews and cafes are primarily an espresso-based company, lower cultivation supply than demand, and the high price tag. To be honest, there are not so many cafe operators and slash or owners are ready to spend the budget to purchase greens that will be roasted and sent to their individual cafes just to be consumed by their own baristas. Customers are put off by the prospect of having to pay four to five times the price for their ordinary coffee. The most of buyers just do not have the expertise to understand the price and the hype. Some customers believe it is too mild to be considered coffee. This is easy to comprehend when the normal order is a long milk-based drink with a roasted mix that emphasizes chocolate and caramelized flavors while sacrificing bean diversity. To summarize, the concept of geisha as a popular coffee will remain a fiction as long as companies are not motivated by customers to even contemplate purchasing and stocking geisha. If a large number of high-quality geisha lots become available in the future, this desire may become a reality, but for now, it's only a thought. At the end of the day, demand is driven by customers. Thanks for watching. If you have any question, please do comment below. See you in the next video. Next video we're going to talk about Indonesia coffee culture. Stay tuned. Bye.